So far, all the values that we've dealt with have been positive. But it turns out that in Scala, all of our integer types, with the exception of character, are actually what are called signed values. There are some programming languages like C and C++ where you can make the decision of whether you no want a number to be signed or unsigned. But in Scala, things like int are signed, which means they have the ability to represent negative values. And that leads to the question, well, how do we represent negative values? So this is our number 53. We've been writing it as 00110101. Okay, that is the 8-bit version of 53. Of course, as an int, it's actually a 32-bit value, but I really don't feel like typing in that many zeros that are in front of it. And the question is, well, how do we represent negative 53? And for this, it turns out we're going to develop what's called two's complement. Um, you know, it's tempting from math to do that, but of course, that's not how it works. We actually don't have negative signs. All we have is zeros and ones. So how do we say that something is negative? There were a number of different approaches that were tried for this, and the, the one that's basically been standardized in all modern, modern hardware is this twos complement approach. And it's based upon the basic definition from math that the negative of something is just, it's the additive inverse. It's the number such that when you add it on, the result is zero. Okay. So what can we put in here in these question marks such that when we add these things together, we get a zero? And at some level, the answer is, well, nothing. It's impossible to do that, except for the fact that we actually have finite precision. If this were an 8-bit number, and there is a type called byte that represents 8-bit numbers, anything that goes above this 8th bit is cut off. It goes away. And indeed, this is why we had those weird things when we added 2 billion plus 2 billion. Because we can only go so big. We only have a certain number of bits, a certain number of digits. So in reality, what we're doing is we're going to say, well, what number could we add that gives us 1 followed by 8 zeros? because this one up here at the top is going to be thrown away. Well, that is a question that we can answer. This one here, if I want a zero, I have to add a one, which would, of course, carry a one, and so then I'd need a zero. Oh, sorry, no, then I'd need another one in there so that I would carry a one. Now I need a zero, and I carry a one, now I need a 1, and I carry a 1. <clears throat> now I need a 0, and I carry a 1. Now I need another 0, and I carry a 1. I need a 1, I carry a 1, I need a 1. So according to this, this number was 53. Negative 53 is 11001011 as an 8-bit number. Turns out that we make this into a 32-bit number, we're just going to stick a whole bunch of 1s at the front of it. And that would give us our 2's complement. We can verify that by calling 2 binary string on 53. And you see here that at the bottom we have 1101100 and then a whole bunch of 1s above that, okay, which is what we found over here. So it's just the value that in a very natural way adds on to give us zero. The nice thing about this for engineers who are building computers is that if we represent our negative numbers this way, our normal addition is also subtraction. And all we have to do is, is find the, the additive inverse. There is a shortcut for finding the additive inverse. And so once again, let's take our value 00110101. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip all of the bits in it. So 11001010. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Note that is not the answer that we had here. It's a little bit off. We have to flip all the bits and then add one. Okay. Why does that work? Well, it turns out that if you flip all the bits and you add these two numbers together, you would get one, 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 all ones. By adding one additional thing to it, 
You get ones carrying all the way up and it turns into the value that we actually want. So the fast way to find a twos complement is to flip all the bits and add one, which in this case was simple because the lowest bit was a zero. But if this had been, say, that number, then flipping the bits would look like this. And when we add one to it, we'd wind up with that. Okay, so it's possible in that adding one that things will be carried up. So that's the basics of representing negative values on the computer.